UFC 302 has just taken place and probably stacking up as, in my opinion, one of the worst pay-per-view cards of the year. We're just going to go through that today. Might be a few other things to talk about. Um, but I'm going to go through every fight, just give my thoughts, just quick thoughts on each one of the matchups, maybe spending some more time on the bigger fights as we go up the card. Going on to the first one, Mitch Raposo versus Andre Lima. Not the best fight to get started off. Andre Lima, clearly a very good technical striker, but um, just really didn't put enough on Mitch Raposo. Landing good leg kicks at range, uh, but the kicks was mainly where it was at. Raposo having a bit more success in the boxing exchanges, in my opinion. And yeah, that just is all there is to say about it, really. Andre Lima improving to 9 0, obviously. His first fight, getting bit and then getting the tattoo around it, kind of had an opportunity to uh, maybe make a sort of name for himself if he got a big knockout win here. But he comes in. Um, misses weight by five pounds as well, which is just terrible. No one ever likes to see that. Comes in, misses weight, pokes his Mitch in the eye loads of times, and then wins a boring decision. So not a great fight to get started of the night. Eileen Perez, um, Jocelyn Edwards, a decent fight. Uh, uh, Perez able to get the knockdown in the second round. Big spin and back fist, then proceeds to not even try and finish her afterwards, which was just insane to watch. And Jocelyn Edwards, where I thought she would lose the fight in these grappling exchanges, she was, that was where she was losing most of the positions. Able to hit some nice sort of reversals and stuff, in, especially in round one. Um, you saw just when Aline Perez would kind of get the takedown from the body lock position, Perez would just drop down all the way and kind of could kind of flip her over from there. So that happened a couple of times. Uh, Justine Edwards did look like she improved a bit, but Aline Perez just looks to be a bit more of that level above in this woman's band and weight division. Going on to probably one of the fights of the nights, Mickey Gall versus Basil Hafez. Really good matchup. Uh, Mickey Gall clearly been working on his striking since he's been away from for so long. I know he has been in surgery as well, but clearly working on that boxing technique, the jab, the the right hand following it as well, was working all night for him. And it was a good chance for Fez after such a close fight with JDM. JDM probably top five best weights in the world right now and uh, Hafez really put on a competitive fight with him in his debut on short notice and uh, didn't look like the same kind of fighter here was able to hurt Mika Goa on a couple different occasions landing more of the damaging shots really what did think he'd knock him out early on the feet you could tell that but um when Mickey Goa stayed in there he started getting success himself and Basil Fez not going to be overly happy with that performance, but it's, he can move on. He can uh, maybe get a higher ranked opponent with someone just outside the rankings. And um, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure he'll be looking to put on a better performance that next time out. Going on to the next one, Phil Bro, Jake Matthews. This fight was it was a decent fight. Phil Rowe not really using his range like he should have been managing to land. I think it was a big knee in the first round. What you know made me think that fight was going to be going to be sort of one where Phil Rowe could keep it at range and find those shots that Jake Matthews was coming in. But Jake Matthews switching up the game plan, started blitzing in and out really well, hitting Phil Rowe with um, a lot of shots as he was blitzing and able to get the decision win. I did, you know, I thought it was quite comfortable for him, but we saw some of the judging and scoring tonight was just absolutely, well, not tonight, sorry, the other night was just absolutely terrible. All night, sort of weird scorecards, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure one of the judges gave that to Phil Rowe. I could be wrong, but I know there was a couple few weird ones on there. And yeah, Jake Matthews been in this game for a long time now, kind of up and down, but I feel like he's always going to be in the UFC fighting, guys. He's been fighting since he was a teenager in the UFC. And, you know, people like Phil Rowe now, it seems like he's kind of got that number. And when he kind of pushes to those rankings, he gets knocked down a peg. So it'll be interesting to see where he goes for from here. Obviously, that Michael Morales win looks a lot better for Morales now because uh, Jake Matthews is a good fighter. Going on to Grant, Grant Dawson, Joe Selecki. I did like this fight. Uh, it wasn't the most entertaining, let's be real. Grant Dawson is just so scared of anything on the feet. Uh, he shoots for takedowns as soon as he can. I think he spent like 14, 14 minutes, 30 seconds of control. No, nah, 13 minutes, 14 seconds of control time or something like that. And um, yeah, pretty much the whole fight on top. So like you having a minute, just only one minute on the feet to work with anything. Probably did land some of the better shots in that minute, but you know, there was nothing to gauge off it. Did get a close guillotine in the first, and um, yeah, easy 30 27 for Grant Dawson. Again, one of the judges ain't going for Joe Selecki, just crazy. And um, 
yeah, the guillotine may be the only thing that threw it, but Grant Dawson, really good wrestling technique. Not the funnest fighter to watch, but, you know, he gets these wins and it just makes me think why he decided to try and even stand with Bobby Green. He should just be going out there shooting takedown straight away. And, um, yeah, not doing that guy. I'm not down his last one, but, you know, he can bounce back. He's still young. He's going to beat a lot of these guys in this in this lightweight division just because of his pure wrestling technique. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll be getting into the rankings like he was with Bobby Green real soon. Jolin and Almeida versus Alexander Romanov. Almeida, weirdly to say, saved us from one of the most boring prelims. Getting the only finish on the card up to this point, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, all decisions. So until the main card, only one finish. And uh, there was a few boring decisions on there as well. So this really wasn't a great card. Um, I'm pretty sure... A lot, maybe a lot more of you guys will be concentrating on the boxing at the moment. I'm not sure if any of you caught the five five uh, matchroom versus Queensbridge card, which was just insane. Um, some of the boxing fights on there, you know, boxing really making a comeback at the moment. And UFC need to start, you know, putting some better stuff together because uh, at a risk, boxing can very easily take over the UFC where, you know, I was such a big UFC fan for so long because the best are fighting the best and now... You, we're slowly starting to maybe go in a direction where, you know, John Jones is fighting Stipe. And talking to Stipe, if you guys saw Stipe on the pads when in that recent video that came out, you know, it's fights like that that it kind of annoyed me and made me stop watching boxing in the first place. So hopefully UFC don't go down that road. Conor McGregor, there's a lot of weird stuff happening with that at the moment. I'll talk maybe talk about it at the end. But um, yeah, we'll just stick on this card. The main card was decent, but, you know, we're I'm waiting for a, bit, a big fight and hopefully the Conor fight does happen because you know i feel like that's what the ufc needs right now but going back to jolin and almeida getting the finish able to he shoots the single leg on romanov straight away and um doesn't get romanov shows some good single leg defense catch uh almeida catches the leg kick tried to drive for it and really struggled to get it but then just gets the body lock and just tumps him over and romanov being sick i think he's six foot two six foot three and one of the fattest obese people you'll ever see in your life it's just a real shame because it's a waste of a career it's just you know somewhat some people just want to be in the UFC so bad and then you got the heavyweight division f filled with fat overweight unhealthy men and Romanov came in shape once in his whole career and looked really good for it and now you know he was undefeated 15 and over when he came into the UFC I think no, he would have been less than that, like 30 to know when he came into the UFC, something like that. Now 17 and 3, um, losing to guys you maybe didn't think we, he'd be losing to. He really looked like a dominant grappler, but when you put a guy that size on his back, it's hard to get up unless you just have that Derek Lewis stand up ability. And, you know, he tucks his chin really well, tucked his chin really well early on, and then just seemed to lift up his neck and let Almeida have it after he, Almeida had his back for too long. And, uh, yeah, overall, uh, Romanov is just. He's just a meme at this point, if we're going to be real, like there's just that sort of thing, like uh, which Romanov are you going to get? We know which Romanov we're going to get. We're going to get the out of shape Romanov every single time he fights and he'll still beat other fatties doing that, but he's not going to beat someone like Jalen Almeida who has sort of made it his mission to come up from light heavyweight and just conquer all these fat guys who can't really grapple, who just pretend to know how to grapple. And that is shown yet again getting the submission in the first round. Going on to the next one, Cesar Almeida, the guy who beat... Um, Glover, Glover Teixeira? No, he didn't beat Glover Teixeira. He beat Alex Pereira in glory kickboxing. And um, Roman Kopolov did have success on the feet early on. Obviously, he scored the big knockdown, I think, in the second round. And I thought he might have finished him. But he broke his hand really early in this fight. And um, turned him into an All-American wrestler. Shooting five takedowns. Cesar Almeida probably has the worst takedown defense I've ever seen in his life. In my life, just giving up takedown after takedown, not even knowing what to do with his hips to defend it. And, um, yeah, a couple of put made it a bit of a boring fight in the end. It was there was some exciting moments. There was it did show like Caesar Almeida was going to come through and win the fight a couple times. I think one of the <laughs> this was a split decision as well, which is just mental. All these decisions really hurt my brain. The UFC need to do something about that as well. I don't know if they can or if it's state commissioned. Uh, I should probably know that, but I'm pretty sure the state gives them. But they've got to have some conversations with these judges. It is just terrible right now. When Sol Diamato is the best judge on the whole card, then you know you're in for a bad night. And yeah, they almost robbed Kopolov. He's kind of maybe lost a bit of that aura he had, like he was a mad knockout artist when he went on the run last year. But you know, he's still a very talented fire beating uh, kickboxer like, like Almeida with one arm. 
one hand and uh, out striking him on in many different times in the fight as well. So yeah, Roman Kopolov, big win for him in his career. Just needs to work on a few little things and he'll, he'll be back. And uh, yeah, overall impressed with Roman Kopolov. I, I did actually think that fight was okay. Going on to the main card now. By the way, this is 2024 and the main card still is having people like Nico Price and Aleski DeSantos on it and Alex Morona and there's just, uh, I mean, uh, the pullouts did really hurt this card, if we're honest. I mean, this could have been an absolute banger. And, uh, yeah, going on to the first one, Randy Brown versus Aleski de Santos. Not a great fight. Uh, more eye pokes than strikes in this fight. I don't know how Randy Brown didn't have a point taken away. I do think he won the fight. Uh, of it, he did have his back taken for a lot of the second round, I know. Towards the end, he did sort of land some nasty ground and pound and could have swayed the round. But I'd say the submission attempts did kind of edge the round for Aleski de Santos. Where Randy Brown... You know, he did what Randy Brown does, stayed on the outside, landed big knee, a couple big knees. That was the main main um, strikes landed in the fight. Jabs with his fingers extended at the end of them just to add that extra inch and reach maybe. And yeah, was able just to sort of just keep Aleski Designer at the range he wanted to. Almost did eat one of those signature wheel kicks, but yeah, overall it was a relatively comfortable night for Randy Brown and on to another win. He probably should get a rank. I think he's like 6-1 and one in his last seven fights and beating some really good guys in the process of doing that. Um, obviously, they lost to JDM. It hasn't aged badly at all, just the way it happened, maybe. But going on to the next one, Nico Price versus Alex Morono. Not going to lie, this is the fight that lost me about £300, so... This is where my night got extremely worse. I had an acker on for the whole car and this is the only one I got wrong. So yeah, that was a bit of a piss take. Um, Nico Price showing that he still had a chin. I thought as soon as he touched, he just goes to sleep, to be honest. After watching that last fight with Robbie Lawler, um, has taken a lot of damage in his career and I thought that was just going to show. Moreno taking it on short notice. You could see he had a very good first round and then start gassing out. And yeah, overall, he, he looked like he couldn't even get going in that third round. The end of the first round, I was even kind of thinking then, he, yeah, he won the round, but it's not looking good. You can tell just by like, no body language expert, but you can tell by fighters' body language when they're starting to slow down. And that's what was happening. And we know Nico Price is a dog. He's going to be in the fight the whole time it's there. And uh, the, well, the whole time the opportunity is there for him to win, he's just going to be, you know, doing everything he can to take it. And it, what he did win the fight in the end. Although it is a detriment to my bank account, he won the fight. I can't complain about that decision. Although the judgment was so bad, this is the only fight I wish they just fucked it up on. But overall, you know, the right man won. Nico Price still has some fight in him. And uh, yeah, I'm sure he, he'll get some more matches and he'll get a chance to still fight in the biggest competition in the world. So can't hate on him. Alex Moreno, he'll bounce back too. He's a decent fighter. He has a weird, awkward style. Maybe on a full camp, he would have beat Nico Price. He did have a very good first round, but yeah, not not going to stress about it. Kevin Holland. God, I've always loved pronouncing this guy's name. Kevin Holland versus Michael Olesundi Shook. Um, Kevin Holland gets dropped by the big, I think it was big right hand after throwing a leg kick. And Olinson Shesha really did look to land some damaging round and pound. And I thought it was one of the only times in Kevin Holland's career well, since I've been watching where he actually looked hurt. The punch actually did some damage. And for a second, I did think the round and pound could have put him out. Obviously, it's Kevin Holland, so that's not going to happen realistically. He snaps up the arm bar and uh, rips on the arm. Probably, sh let's be real, it shouldn't have been stopped. If you don't tap, you know, this is a, this is a fighting sport. Um, your arms can get broken, but you have to tap to stop the fight. We saw, uh, what was it? It was Paul Craig against Jamal Hill. That fight getting allowed as long as it did from Herb Dean, and then he stopped this one so prematurely. So, yeah, his arm wasn't even broken in the end. I don't think it was just bending in a horrible way. Kevin Holland, we, he's actually got some nasty jiu-jitsu, to be fair, but must have just never wrestled throughout college because that's always been his problem. Says he's the best gatekeeper the UFC has, and, you know, you kind of got to agree with him, and you like... He, he's always going to be there to put on entertaining fights with certain little fun matchups you can give him. He can jump between well weight and middle weight, so there will always be a home for Kevin Holland. His last few performances kind of annoyed me, I'm not going to lie. The Wonder Boy one where he just kept standing up when he got the takedown after he was just getting his ass whooped, and MVP just toyed with him the whole time. But big win for him in his career. 
getting back on track and you know getting, he needed that to be fair because Kevin Holland he can't he can't be on three losses in a row and uh yeah big win for him nasty armbar had some real good submissions and sort of uh knockouts off his back he has some real cool finishes in the UFC so he's always going to be really marketable always a good character to have around and you know he'll probably fight again next week so good win for Kevin Holland good win for the UFC I'm sure they were happy about it too Going on to the next one, a Sean Strickland fight. What can I say about this without sounding like I'm a hater, to be fair, because it seems like every time he fights, I have something to say about it afterwards, where in the press conference he's saying, it's to the death, he's going to do all this, he's going to do all that, and then he comes out and jabs for five rounds. But I will blame Paolo Costa more for this one. Costa clearly, I think, intimidated to stand in boxing range with Sean Strickland because you see the damage he does put on people when they do just stand there like Drickers did. And... um really cuts up their face just busts them up with a jab marching backwards and he did not want that he tried going on the back foot kind of kicking more Strickland's defense is always good the leg kicks maybe affected him in the first round then if anything it was damaging Costa more you can't really Strickland went from one of the worst leg kick defenders in the UFC to one of the best in the space of a few fights and um that's just all the sparring he does and it shows in this one as well all the sparring really taking its toll here. Never getting tired. Just so calm in the pocket. Marching forward. Throwing that jab out. So awkward to fight. And easily winning the fight. I do not understand how a judge can give four rounds to Costa. That guy needs to be brung out the back of the arena. And uh, someone needs to do something horrific to him. Because that was terrible. He needs to lose his job. He needs to go be a judge on street beefs. He can come judge some shitty taekwondo tournaments around our way. He should just never be any professional judge again that was honestly so bad that's one of the worst scorecards I've probably the worst scorecard I've ever seen so Strickland in my opinion won all five rounds quite comfortably maybe the first round the only one you could give to Costa and yeah it was just another Sean Strickland fight that's all I can say about it Islam Makhachev versus Dustin Poirier Islam Makhachev showing to me people might not agree with this but showing to me why he is pound for pound number one John Jones, you know, has had one fight in four or five years. That is not my pound for pound number one. Um, Islam has been fighting beast, beating uh, Volkanovski for that pound for pound spot. Everyone at the time market as that's pound for pound number one against pound for pound number two. He beat Volk twice, takes that spot, then goes on to beat Dustin Poirier. And it's annoying because, you know, I really do like Islam Makhachev and he just keeps going and putting my favourite fights to sleep and he could be moving up and fighting Leon Edwards very soon. So um, that could be another one where, you know, Islam Makhachev will just make me hate him in the end and I'm not sure about how everyone else feels about that, but he's a funny guy. Um, I know he was saying if you don't tap you sleep and then in the in the post fight press conference he was like well he did both in the end which was a funny little joke he made Dustin Poirier really just putting on an absolute sort of barn burner in his last fight you could see he put everything into this and he wasn't going to let that belt sort of slip it out of his hands he really wanted to just grab hold of that and he was going out there to kill Islam Makhachev defended the wrestling very well Islam to be fair he let's be real he's no Khabib he's beat, he, Islam is beatable I think Leon will look at that and think he can beat him I think Armin will look at that and think he can beat him I'm not saying they will but you know if you're a fighter in that weight class like they were when Islam was on the run to the belt because I think the sort of fear mongering that Khabib and DC were putting into the sort of ethos where they were saying how good this guy was and saying he's so much better than Khabib and stuff where he might have more weapons to win than Khabib, but he's not better than Khabib. He's an easier fight. To, he's more beatable than Khabib. I was saying that during the fight as well to a few of my mates I was watching it with. If you're a fighter in that weight class, you're looking at him and thinking, all right, I can stuff some of the takedowns on him. He'll give me opportunities on the feet because he is good there. And he was able to out outbox Dustin Poirier at a lot of different occasions. Poirier did start doing some damage, that nasty elbow after defending a takedown. Um... One judge had it two all going into the fifth. I actually did not have it like that, obviously. Um, I, on the night, I think I had it 3-1 Islam going into the fifth round. I'd have to re-watch uh, re it. I haven't actually rewatched the card since. And um, I'll have to rewatch it and see if I can even see the judge's point of view. But from going off the night, I doubt I could see the judge's point of view. Dustin really, really looking good in his last fight. Could you know? Could he fight again? That's that's the thing I am interested in. I know Volkanovski said um, if he don't get the Tapora fight, he's not just going to be wanting to fight like random contenders. You know, he's beat most of them at featherweight, so he's going to probably jump between lightweight, maybe fight Max for the bit. No, Max will be fighting Tapora. What am I talking about? Maybe fight um, Dustin Poirier, like he said. You know what's interesting? If this Conor McGregor Chandler fight doesn't happen. 
what about Volkanovski, Michael Chandler at lightweight? I mean, I don't know if, as a Volk fan, that uh, that's the nicest thing to do to him after coming off those two knockouts. But there's a few interesting things to do with uh, Volk. And I don't know if Poria will accept that. It would be an interesting fight. I think Volk would probably beat Poria if it was a couple of years ago. But now I'm not 100% sure. Poria is still so good and his boxing is so crisp that uh, if he touches Volk on the chin, I think the fight could be over quite quickly. A bit very similar to the uh, Poria one where he was just backing up against the cage. He maybe even land the same sort of punch where he went to the body and brought the hook over the top. I could very well see that happening. Um... But yeah, tomorrow, I know I haven't been uploading for a while. Tomorrow, there will be the prediction for the upcoming card. There's actually a decent little card. Um, and then, I don't know, any boxing coming up. That's what is taking my interest a lot at the moment. I might make a video talking about that 5v5 matchroom card as well. So yeah, a few interesting things to talk about this week. We'll be back breaking down the cards every week now. So yeah, make sure you like, subscribe, rate us five stars on Spotify, uh, share us around so we know you're interested in listening. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>